Hello right, guys and girls and welcome to the playoff match round one of PMC season five. We are once again up versus the Pittsburgh Empoleons coached by none other than Lux. This is the playoffs. Finally, it's going down. Three more wins and we will be in the finals. Oh no wait, three more wins and we did win the finals. Two more wins and we are in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are facing looks. We already faced him in the regular season. We did manage to win right there, which is a good sign, of course. But since it is a rematch, and you know my stance on rematches, I the winner is always a little bit uh, disadvantaged. So yeah, we will see if we can overcome that to defeat our opponent right here. Of course, before we go into the whole team preview, I'll shout out part the. Uh, oh wait, no, I want to go exactly the shout out part. So let's go right into that before we go into team preview and all this good stuff. Recording this match for me was none other than Dark Devil uh, 20 something or 36. 26 or 36. I actually don't know the number part, but it's Dark Devil. His links will be in the description. He did record a lot of matches in this league for me already. And of course, the, uh, the person responsible for generating this team for me was Mastodon. He did gen a lot of my teams in this season as well, so his links will be in the description. Uh, they have both helped me out a lot. Give him a look. You know the deal. This is the shoutouts part. Now let's go into team preview about my team. Of course, I did upload a team builder yesterday. So you can check out there what my thought process was by building this team, what his biggest threats are, what my biggest threats are. All this in fine detail. But for a very quick overview for don't for the people which don't really have the time or don't really care enough to watch a full team builder, we have special defensive Sugarberry Needle Queen, Expert Belt uh, Metal Claw Sneasel, Phaser Defense Rantus. Bulky Defog, uh, uh, Bulky Taunt, Finny, then uh, Bulk Up, Earthquake Acrobatics, Mew, with a Citrus Berry, very nice set, and then Assault Vested, uh, Rotom Heat. Looking upon the team, he brought the Tornadius, the Zygarde, the Empoleon, the Diancy, the Dalmice, and the Buzzhole. So, he brought a very similar team to last time. I did bring a similar team to last time as well. I only changed one Mon completely. Mega Pidgeot is out now, we have Sneasel. He changed only one mo Mon exactly as well. He has now the Dalmice. And what did he add last time instead of Delmice? I have to think about that a little bit. I actually don't know. Buster was there last time, Mega Dancy as well. This guy as well, this guy as well, this guy as well. Okay, now it's Delmice there. I actually forgot what this what he brought last time instead of that. We all only know Delmice is new, but that's not a big problem. Look at his team, my Mew is looking very nice to sweep versus him. I have Acrobatics for the uh for the Zygarde. I have Acrobatics or Earthquake for the uh for the Tornadus. These are the his two main attackers. It's the Tornadus, it's not Life Orb, he has no way. Of 2 KOing my Mew, barring potentially with uh, Basel, if I'm not at plus 1 already, or uh, plus 2 I need if he's fully offensive, or his Delmice. But with both of them, I would beat them barring the, barring the Basel with Scarf, and I can Oko that with Acrobatics, and I can do a lot of damage with this thing to the Acrobatics as well. And then, of course, we have Earthquake for the Empoleon and the Diancy. So, looking for the right opportunity for Mew to set up is how we are gonna win this game. Other than that, I'm not really too scared of this team. For today, we have Assaulted the Rotom. For the uh, Zygarde, we have like Fizzy Defense Rent plus Finny, kind of. The Empoleon, most likely going to be not being offensive. The Diancy, we have Needle Queen for. Delmice, Lorenz checks that as well. And the Buzzhole, we can check with our, uh, our Finny. So, overall, I'm not too scared of overall this team. But let's just go right into the game. I decided to lead with my uh, Needle Queen to get at my rocks right away. Last time, he did lead with the uh, Tornadus, and I did lead with the Rotom Heat, which is. A very light lead on his part again, and to counter that, it's a very light lead on my part again, because last time my Rotom Heat was once again my counter to Tornadus, so this time I actually predict him to predict my Rotom lead. So we already started with the mind game since this is a rematch, and the best thing he has to counter my Rotom Heat lead would be either the Zygarde or the Mega Diancy. Bo both of which, which are checked by my Sugarberry Needle Queen, I can just Earth Power the Diancy, I can Ice Beam the Zygarde, but Sugarberry can take any hit, so I decide to just straight lead with my Needle Queen, and let's see. Well, he decides to leave him. Of course, you already saw that in the uh, in the team preview part. And my webcam is lagging, but now we are back. Okay. <laughs> it lagged in team build as well. I noticed this in the upload. But either way, we lead with Nips. Our opponent decides to lead with T-Pain, which is the Tornado. So if he would have just left with uh, Rotom, like, once again, like, we come short on this mind game. I'm actually going to decide to go so straight for the rocks. Uh, since I'm Spideff, I can take any hit. And I don't really expect to switch out. Just go for straight for the uh, U-turn. But he does go for Hurricane, which is, of course, annoying. Since that brings down my Needle Queen to a low amount of HP, and I still need to sing at least a little bit healthy to still check the Diancy. So I do switch out, of course, right here into my Rotom. That is my main check to this thing. And uh, yeah, let's see if he picks that goes for U-turn now, or does he go for something else? No, he does go for Hurricane again, and he misses. 
Of course, that would have done around 20% uh, of my rotom, not too big of a deal. But this time he does actually scout for the World Search as well, so it seems he was uh, me being scarf as well. So it seems he, this time he was a little bit uh, more cautious seeing my narration from last time. But anyway, he does go straight for World Switch. I don't expect him to hard switch into Zygarde. Last time that was our first prediction, go straight for HBA switch into Zygarde. This time it didn't work out. So we do a World Switch out, he does go on Diancy, which gets us right back into the Needle Queen. So now the problem is, since I'm so low, I don't feel comfortable predicting something else to go for Ice Beam or Shadow Ball since uh, it wouldn't KO Diancy from here. And I would die to uh, Earth Power plus something else. So if I over predict right here, I go for Ice Beam, he doesn't die, then my uh, Needle Queen will die. So I do play it more safe, go straight for the Earth Power. Of course, he does sadly switch out, he didn't want to risk his Mega Diancy, but I didn't want to risk my Needle Queen as well since already right, due to Hurricane damage, I didn't feel comfortable staying in right there. But uh, yeah, we go for Earth Power, he just goes straight into T Pain, which of course takes Rock Stand, but is immune to Earth Power. We go right back. Into our check to this, which is the Rotom. Let's see if he hits a Hurricane this time or if he does predict or something else. Like you can see right here, he decides to go straight for the knockoff. So he does get rid of our Sword Vest, and now the Hurricanes will do a little bit more. Now he knows we are not Scarf, so he can, of course, just go straight for the U turn. And we actually decide to go straight for the HB Ice right here, because if we once again go for the Voltage on the Mid Diancy, we can't just go for Ice Beam that time, because then he's in range of Ice Beam. So do go for HB uh, Ice, predicting either the Dalmice to come in or the. Uh, the Zygarde, but sadly this is an over prediction on our part and we just go straight for Impar Ice on the Diancy again, which is now annoying because now we have to switch into that thing. The only thing which can really take a hit right here is our uh, Lido Queen, it can take a, a, a Power Gem plus an Earth Power from this Diancy, uh, so it's still a nice switch and he does stay in right here, of course the Power Gem right here from him, so it's Moveblast would be resisted and Moveblast with Earth Power we can take as well since we are split death. But like you can see right here, he actually decides to go for the Diamond Storm. So this time he is mixed. Last time he was fully special. This time he is mixed. And Diamond Storm plus Earth Power we sadly cannot take since we are spit death and not busy defense with this Diamond Storm. Did a lot more damage than a uh, Power Gem would have done. And yeah, even the Sugar Barry is not saving us right here. Needle Queen is going down. There was really no worth in saving this thing since Rocks are already up. And a good amount of his team just speed and kills it from this range. So I decided to just sack my Nidoqueen right here versus the Diancy. And bring in the only mod which I have to revenge kill this really. Like, I, the only mod I have is the Sneasel. Everything else is slower than this thing. And I don't want anything else to take a hit right here. So now we have Sneasel in right here. We are sadly behind this match. We already lost our Nidoqueen. And this Diancy is in range of my Acid Crash. For sure. And he is potentially in range of knockoff if he is minus defense. Since he is mixed with Diamond Storm and he, it's, it's, he's not going to be fully physical. At least I don't think so. He needs Moveless for uh, uh, Mons on my team. And, and he's already shown Earth Power, so he's definitely mixed. So if he's mixed and minus defense, knockoff can potentially kill him as well, especially if on choice bandit, which he doesn't know. So either way, short, uh, long story short, I predict the switch out right here. And I think the best switch he can go into right here would be his Bustle. Because that covers the knockoff, that covers the acid crash, and it just scares me out right away with the Drain Punch or Leech Life. So I actually want to predict a Bustle right here and go for Aerial Ace because an Expert Felt boosted Aerial Ace does to it KO a Bustle if it comes in and we can go back into this game getting rid of Bustle right away, getting rid of a big threat of our Miro. So we do, do do just that. He does actually switch out, so that is great because Aerial Ace of course wouldn't kill him, but he does not switch into Bustle. He does just switch into his Pittsburgh, which is his Empoleon. We would have gone for all the knockoff right here, would have been great. Just Probably would have been the safer play. Try to be a bit aggressive right here, getting a bit into the game. Sadly, in over we do a little to no damage to this thing, and now he knows that we have Aerial Ace, so he's not switching in the bus or recklessly. But we can just go hard into our VD right here to uh, basically sponge every hit and go for Nature's Madness, Taunt, all these good stuff versus this thing. He just goes straight for the rocks, so sadly we bring our Taunt in a turn too late. We have potentially go for the Defog with our Finny to get rid of those, but then we get rid of our rocks as well. So either way, I do just go straight for the Nature's Madness right here. Will of course do half to this, and he does go into Moisty Maya, which is his uh, Dalmice, which of course will take half from this Nature's Madness. The only problem with Nature's Madness always is Nature's Madness doesn't help you if you want to scout. Like, I have no idea if this is Assault, if it's for death, if it's fully offensive or something like that. But what I can do right here is just switch hard into my Lurantis, predicting him to go for Rapid Spin. I can just go to Lurantis, which is a good check to it since Fizzy Defensive resists his strongest death. And if he does Rapid Spin, I can just defog myself and we both don't have any hazards. So, uh, yeah. But he does just go straight for Power Whip. And from this damage, I can tell that he is definitely attack invested. I don't know if he's fully invested or just a little bit, uh, but he's definitely invested with power. But that's more than no invested. So it's still difficult to tell what kind of the, uh, uh, thing this is. I just go straight for Leaf Storm right here because Hidden Power Ice wouldn't kill him. And plus two Hidden Power Ice after that would do a lot to manage to everything. He does sell the switch into Tornado, so Hidden Power Ice would have been a bit better right here. 
play Dugo for Leaf Storm. Swift rocks together, we still do a decent chunk to this tornado. He's definitely not a salt test. So he's around 50%. We do get a plus two boost, but of course we are scared out right here since we don't want to take uh we don't want to take a hurricane. We still need to sing around for the Zyga. So do we just switch out into our check to this, which of course is our wall at this time because I have lost the assault death on my Rotom. I didn't want hard to do that because with rocks and with another hurricane, I am potentially in range to die to hurricanes. And I predict actually to go for u turn right here. You can predict me to obviously switch out. And if I go into Rotom and u turns on me, I just take understand rock damage. Finny takes way less rock damage and Finny baits out the uh, damage once again, which I of course have a check in with my. Durantus, which gives me either an attack on him or a synthesis, depending if he decides to go for Shadow Pearl this time, or even the Defog if he decides to go for Rapid Spin this time. So, once again, I do just hard switch out into. Oh, wait, this time. Oh, wait, no, I, I'm sorry, right here. So, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. I actually do go for Moonblast right here. So, looking at this, at this mod, if he is not Assault Blasted, if he's just Max HP, he is in range of Moonblast from my. from my Fini. And I do to end since my uh, Laurent is a great switch into him. I already showed him that's my switch him. I do actually want to predict him to not go for power to either go for one shadow claw or this time to go for a rapid spin. So I just go straight for the move blast this time. I'm sorry, I did get a bit of mad myself. And from this getting ahead of myself, you probably can already tell what happens. He lives on a sliver of HP. Look at this, look at this little amount. And he does go for synthesis. So we from damage, we can tell that he's not a uh, salt test. And from the synthesis, we can of course tell that he is not a salt test. And he lives on a sliver of health, which is very annoying now. This damn is still around. And now I'm of course scared out. Now he can just go for power if he's at a good amount of HP. So I do a hard switch out into my Laurentis this time. So I do, do still need my Fiddy around for the Tornadus with, together with my Rotom and kind of the Zygat as well together with my Laurentis. But either way, he just go for the synthesis and this Dermis is back at full health, which is uh, very unfortunate. I, I, it, I don't exactly know if it was a roll. I don't know his exact HP set at that point, but it looked like a roll. And if it is a roll, I guess of course unfortunate. If not, happens. Happens. <laughs> but either way, I do just go straight for HP Ice this time right here. Trying to catch the Tornadus on the switch in since he does have no business staying in. But he does stay in and it shows that he's actually Yachi Berry. So no need know what item he is. He gets rid of Yachi Berry right here and he does just go straight for Shadow Claw. Which will do a good amount of damage to us, even more physical defenses, since it does score a crit. And that of course forces me to synthesis right here. Because we still need, this is our only thousand arrow switch and really, so I still need this thing to be healthy. And uh, yeah, he does switch out this time back into T-Pain, so that's a bit annoying because without the crit I would have just gone for HP Ice, getting some good, dam good damage on this thing. But uh, yeah, we of course need our thing healthy, so we do just go for that. Ah. So, now that you is back in, of course I want to... Still, once again, I do not want to switch out into my Rotom right here. I have to decide, do I go into Rotom, do I go into Finny? Do I go break for Hurricane because then Rotom is the play? Do I go break into U turn? Then Finny is the play. And I do break to go for U turn right here. It was kind of 50 50. I decide to switch into my Walnut on this thing. And like you can see right here, he decides to go for the Hurricane this time. So it was not the correct play, sadly. So my Finny takes a lot of damage. And now my Finny is pretty weak. And that's the last time I switch in this. He doesn't take another Hurricane right here. So, yeah, I decide to just go straight for the Moonblast. Hurricane could potentially miss, but he does go for the Sludge Wave, which will guaranteed KO my Finny. I didn't have a switch in that Hurricane at this point. My only hope was him missing, because two Hurricanes kill my Rotom after Rock, since I do uh, take Rock damage as well, and I lost my Assault this. So I do switch in Rotom this time, since I can take one guaranteed, and I can just go straight for the uh, Volt Switch at this time, I think I go for. I think I go for Volt Switch right here, right? I do not go for HP Ice. Let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm, I don't know myself actually right here. I do think I go for Volt Switch. He does go to Pittsburgh. Do I, I think I go for Volt Switch, right? Do I go for Volt Switch or do I go for HP Ice? No, I do for HP Ice again. God damn it. I try to be aggressive. <laughs> it does work out. Oh, my prediction do, don't work out. I try to be aggressive again because last time I did just go straight for Volt Switch. I did go for HP Ice. It didn't work out. So this time we could go into that. But he does go for Arco Jet straight. And th uh, that means I can get a free Thunderbolt on him. Uh, I was a bit surprised to see Aquajet on him, but then I get to a Kalk, and yeah, if he's not attacking investment, that's not killing me. If I would have gone for Volt right here, this Pittsburgh would have been down, which would have been great, but no, I said I did a second old prediction versus this Penguin coming in, and if I would have gone for Knockoff, he would have died to the Thunderbolt. If I would have gone for Volt Switch, he would have died to something else. Pretty wise, I, I, it's, this net is not working out for me. I do just go straight into Gesundheit right here because I can kill him, of course, with the uh, Knockoff from this range. Didn't want to go into... I had a good chance. To, to be fair, I need to go a bit more detail about this play. Because I had a good chance of going into my mirror right here. And trying to set up versus him. But since he, ha he has an Aqua Jet. 
He has shown rocks. Since he has Aqua Jet, I was debating maybe he doesn't have Toxic, maybe he doesn't have Raw. Is this just setup for the for my Mew? But I didn't want to rerun to play around with Goldman since Misty Terrain is not up, and if he has Toxic or Raw, that's not gonna work out. So I'm still waiting on the perfect chance to set up with my Mew. I'm still looking for it. Still looking for it. So far, the option has not presented itself because he was either in with Tornado, uh, was either U turning with Tornadoes, or uh, he was in with Del Nice, or with Empoleon, or with the Mega Dan He was in with Mega Dancy. There I could have potentially gone to Mew, but I still want to preserve my bulk up set right here. So we are still waiting on a good good chance to go with that. But he does go for Aqua Jet, of course, that's very good damage. And we do KO the Pittsburgh with the knockoff, and he chose to have the uh, Shaka Berry once again. Which, uh, yeah, he had last time as well. It was a 50 50, like if he has the Shaka or the uh, Chopper Berry, but now he does go into John Cena, which is the Basso, which is, of course, scary. I can go for Arrow Ace, but that won't KO him, so I actually decide right here to just go for it because I don't really have a switch in this fight. My Fini is down, and I only have Lurantis and Mew left, and only have one way to win this game right here, which is he goes, of course, for Leech Life. Sadly, that means. That he goes, uh, gets a beast boost. He was slow though, we already know that he's not Scarf, so that's important. But the crit doesn't matter right here. He gets a little bit of health right here, and now I only have one shot at winning, really, which is going into new right here, scare him out, and go for the bulk up. Because if I have a bulk up up and these, I'm scared of the bus hole, then I have a chance of winning this game. Because then I have a plus one, nothing on this team can two hit KO me, everything will die to either plus one acrobatics. I still need now I would have to bulk up again with the Dalmice because then I can take the Shadow Claw, get my berry and then I can go for acrobatics and then a plus two Mew and nothing can two hit KO me. Even if he stays in right here, if I go for a bulk up I can take a plus one leech life, I can KO this thing and then it depends what he goes to revenge kill me because depending on what he goes in I can still roost up on that. So now it's not the perfect scenario for Mew, but it's still best, the best shot we have right now, because obviously I can't go to the rent, that would just die to plus one leech life. So, uh, yeah, I do decide to not go straight for acrobatics, I do decide to go for bulk up right here, because that's the best shot we have now at sweeping with our Mew. So I do just go straight for the bulk up, he does sadly stay in, and like you see right here, since he is at plus one, this leech life will do a lot of damage. It will, of course, bring us in the berry range, so we will get some recovery out of this. And we get our full powered, uh, what you call it, our full powered um, acrobatics versus him. But since we are citrus berry, we will be below 50%. If it would be the 50% berry, that would have been awesome right here because then we would have been over 50%. That means the, 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 the what you call it, the uh, 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 Diancy couldn't revenge kill us and nothing could actually revenge kill us since we are at over 50%. Nothing would truly KO us, but since we have the citrus berry, we aren't able to recover enough, we do kill John Cena. Now we have the only hope that he either goes to Danis to revenge kill us, misses, or he goes into something else than Diancy, but sadly he does play it correctly, he does go into Diancy, and since we do not, did not have the 50% berry, we did hit the Citrus berry, we are in range of a Moonblast right here. I just go for a Roost in case he goes to something weird, I don't know, goes for Diamond Storm, which we would take since we are plus one defense. But yes, let's go straight for Moonblast, kills our Jimmy Mutron, and now it's sadly game over. We only have the Durantus left, even if I keep boosting, uh, like the only chance I have is like he misses everything, but Diancy doesn't miss. Like I can go for Diamond Storm here and miss, and then he goes into the tornadoes and misses a lot, and then I can just go for the Leaf Storms and hit for Ice with the rest of the team. But sadly, he does hit, of course, the Moonblast. Fun fact, he gets the special attack drop, which is, of course special attack race for me. So we do kill the uh, uh, what you call it? Oh, it lags a bit. We do kill the Moonbright as well. But now he can just he can just go, we have a plus two Lorant a plus three Lorantus, but he can't just go to anything to revenge kill us at, at this point. Be it these, uh, be it the Zygarde, be it the only thing he couldn't go into is the Dalmite because Dalmite is slower than me, so I could synthesis up on that. But uh, yeah, he does go on the halfway there, which is the Zygarde, and uh, yeah, that will of course KO us. So we do lose this game, sadly, in round one of the playoffs. We had a great regular season. We actually had the best record in the regular season, but round one of playoffs, we do manage to lose sadly our game. We end our winning streak, and with that, we are not continuing into the finals and not getting our championship sadly but now let's talk about this game a bit why did we lose what happened so um, I, I i think the main two pro two things i did wrong two things one thing i don't really fault me too much for but one thing i definitely fault myself for so one thing we did wrong is the a lot of over predictions we tried to be aggressive especially at the beginning where i caught the lead wrong i definitely didn't expect the lead of tunes again because rotom was just such an obvious lead with me like look at this team Electric Attack versus the Tornadoes, Hidden Power Isis, the Zygarde, Electric Attack versus Empoleon, then we have Diancy, which I picked the lead him with, Overheat versus Delmice, Overheat versus Busshole. Rotom was a great lead. Maybe I should have just gone with that and not thought too much into it going into mind games because Rotom beats like 5 out of his uh, 6 months, or is good versus 5 of his 6 months. And, uh, but yeah. 
sadly that didn't work out. That forced that got my hurricane on my Nido Queen, which I probably shouldn't have risked there because Nido Queen healthy would have been great for the Diancy still around. And if Diancy not around, he didn't had a he didn't had a good way of revenge killing my Mew at that point. But uh, but uh, yeah, that was one mistake. Like all the old so We start with the game, then the Aerial Ice was in Polion, the Hidden Power Ice was in Polion, the Hidden Power Ice was in Diancy, which has gone for Voltage all the time with my Rotom. I would have been in way easier time. So I tried to be I tried to be a, too aggressive in this game. So I think which kind of came to the point where I brought this very similar team and if I just go for safe place every time he knows what my mons are or he has a good idea what my mons are because also we're not exactly the same and he can just play accordingly but if I make aggressive predictions I thought I could play around that sadly but sadly that did not work out at all and the second mistake I get these old predictions these these happen like these happen like I, these are very aggressive place. I agree. Very aggressive place. I probably should have played a lot safer, which I mean the end result shows that I should have played a lot safer. But uh, yeah, the other thing is I should have gone to Mew sooner. I was waiting too long on the correct chances set up with Mew. For example, when I had my when the day answer was out first time, where I go to sneeze, I could have just gone straight to Mew and start walking up and see what Kauri reacts to it and stuff like that. Like the other fault, of course, is not having 50% barrier, but that was a 50-50. But uh, yeah, that's like that's. How I want to summarize this game. Too many aggressive operations, which I think might have been due. I don't really know, but it might have been due to me having very similar mons and me bringing them in the mindset, okay, I have to I have to play if when my team is not different, I have to play different. So that's basically how you how you could see that. But uh yeah, sadly we do we do lose. Uh, it was still a great season, the PMC I had a lot of fun, the regular season of course. We had a very like I kind of getting flashbacks from my first season in the GBA where I had the best regular season in the GBA as well, and then I lost round one of playoffs. So it's a very disappointing end, of course, to regular season like that. But that's the nature of playoffs. I lo like that's the nature of playoffs. You can be the best in regular season and still not come close to getting the championship, like this time right here. In other leagues, like the PPL, which has like a non-playoff system, where you like the you play with everyone in the season, and then the result of that determines your what you what you are in the end. That is our, with this system, of course, I would have I would have won the actual league. But I'm actually, even though this happened to me two times now, I'm still more a fan of playoffs. That's why all the leagues I create in my own always have playoffs. Because I don't like, for example, me, like two weeks before the season happened, you would already know that I won because no one could potentially catch up to me. But with playoffs, it's you have to watch every game till the end to actually know who won the game. It's exciting till the end to see who the champion will be. With like a predetermined system, you already know, okay, yeah, he's not made. He cannot possibly make it. He cannot possibly make it. You already know that before the last week happens. And in the... Most times the last week is just a formality, you just have to go through and then, oh, I'm still the champion. So that's why I like playoffs more, even though it did hurt me too much this so far. But uh, yeah, now I'm just ranging on random topics, of course. Uh, let me know what you thought about this game, what do you think what I did wrong, what can we learn from this match. Of course, let me know your thoughts about the overall season as well. I'm not doing a recap video for this league, uh, because we go straight to the next league, actually. The draftiness is... For that trip going up next week and we already have some battles on that as well but i don't want to spoil too much on that but yeah let me know overall what you thought about the season if you have any questions about the season about my draft what i thought about certain months put them all in the description right here this is like your chance for the recap questions is this video but uh, either way that's all from me if you enjoyed leave a like comment, subscribe you know the deal hit up my opponent hit up the guys i mentioned at the beginning that's all from me i will see you another time ciao